Now that you've created your outline, you will be ready to draft your literature review. So let's go back to our attorney. In your introduction, you were like an attorney making an opening statement. The attorney sought to interest the jury with her perspective, highlight some of the witnesses that would be presented, describe why exploring the evidence would be important for justice. So staying with that metaphor, we'll go on to talk about how this links to the lit review. So the literature review is like the attorney calling the witnesses. So the attorney's made the opening statement, now he's calling up the witnesses, and he's going to be careful to arrange the witnesses in a good sequence, identify what evidence is most important from each witness, ensure that connections between witnesses' testimony make sense, and ensure that each witness keeps to the point without a lot of extraneous information and opinions. So just like the attorney, you're going to take care with how you present your evidence. So the attorney will arrange the witnesses in a good sequence, and likewise, you're going to arrange your topics and supporting articles in good sequence. The attorney is going to identify the evidence that's most important from each witness, and likewise, you'll identify what's most important from each article you cite. The attorney will ensure that each witness keeps to the point without making a lot of extraneous information and opinions. You can picture those lawyer shows where the witness tries to ramble on about something and the attorney has to redirect him or her. And similarly, you have to make sure your writing keeps to the point without putting in your opinions or a lot of extra information. Finally, the attorney is ensuring that the connections between and among witnesses' testimony make sense, and you're going to do the same. Make sure the transitions between your paragraphs make sense. You'll recall from content in the outline lecture that the Lit Review has the purpose of exploring explaining the existing research in an area of interest by describing key studies, linking the studies together logically, introducing and defining terms and theories, citing everything, and ending with a hypothesis. So the first purpose, explaining the current state of knowledge. Science is a building process in which science studies build on other studies to create a vast body of knowledge. So you don't usually, most scientists don't just start from nowhere, they start by looking at what questions have already been answered. So your job in this is to become expert in one small body of knowledge and then impart this knowledge systematically through your lit review about the studies you run. Of course, the articles you keep for your lit review should focus on a common theme, link together logically, be empirical, recent, in the last 10 years, perhaps, original research. Include seminal research articles when they're relevant. And by that, we mean those groundbreaking articles that advanced a new theory. Sometimes it's important to include those, like including the original bystander effect study, even though there's been abundant research since then about bystander effect. So secondly, you want to now really continue to follow that common thread. In your outline, you organized your articles logically to build the need for your hypothesis. Now you need to scrutinize it, reread your outline. Did you do the following? Did you read your articles more than, more than once, or at least the key parts of your articles so that you can connect them logically? Avoid using articles that really aren't relevant. Just abandon them. Um, Think about topics that bind certain articles together under a common theme. So, you know, you want to be having this thread that follows all the way through your writing. Think about how one article leads to the next and use these connections as transitions among topics. And stay on topic, linking your reasoning back to that common thread. So this thread of logic should be apparent through your entire lit review. So another part of your lit review is to define key terms and theories. So any team, any terms that you're going to be using, um, like ac those phrases that are used that are part of psychology, all of those you want to define them here or explain them. And def so define these key terms. Include 
any acronyms in parentheses. So in APA style, when there's an acronym, you first write them out and then you, in full words, and then you put them in parentheses. And it would look like this, say, the American Psychological Association, all written out, and then in parentheses, APA. You need to use these acronyms only if you intend to refer frequently to the same uh, longer phrase, and that just shortens your research. You don't need acronyms for everything, and you don't need to include acronyms if you don't intend to use that phrase again. Describe any main theories that underpin your topic. You know, sometimes you come across these, and you know, if you're working with attachment theory, write kind of what that theory is about. Next, cite everything. So your lit review is not you talking. Every single thing that you're putting in your lit review is someone else's work, and you need to cite that work. So um, if you make a statement, for example, in our first bullet point that says, previous research has shown that something, 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 you'll include in parentheses examples of studies that showed that. So anytime you say mention previous research or relate any finding or method, you need to put the sources. That's going to be in parentheses after the fact that you stated. We'll look at that a little later. So what you're doing here, if you picture yourself as a, an attorney calling up witnesses in a trial, these sources, these papers that you read, these are your witnesses and they speak for themselves. So this is what you really need to um, concentrate on here. And one thing to note, if you're using only one source for a whole paragraph, you don't have to cite it multiple times unless it becomes unclear that it's the same course source. You can cite it at the start. And as long as it's clear that you're still talking about the same study, you don't have to recite it. And I'll talk to you a little more about this in a bit. And finally, you want to end your lit review just before your methods with your gap and your hypothesis. And you've already written these out, at least in draft form. So now you're going to proofread them and make sure they're still valuable. And you're going to write about this gap and your hypothesis. So all of your writing in your lit review build a case for this hypothesis that you propose to study. So the gap in this last paragraph, you maybe already did this in your outline, but you're going to reread it now. You pull these topics together to show that there's an important unanswered question. And then for your hypothesis, you're going to just state your hypothesis as your last statement before your lit review. So as you're figuring out how to do this, pay attention to the lit review and the articles you're reading. Take a little time to look at it. It's going to be located after the introduction and before the methods section. And it might, you know, it might be a couple pages. And so pay attention. How did the author structure the lit review? What common thread did they link? Did the author use subheadings in their lit review? How did they link the paragraphs? How did they make sure that one paragraph led to the next paragraph? What does their hypothesis look like? How did they state the gap that led to the hypothesis? So these will help you as you're learning.